guests are, how long they've been here. Um, many people know about David Icke, and I understand that he thinks highly of your work as well. Um, other than David Icke, there's only a handful of other individuals that go into this area of research outside the five cents reality, uh, five cents version uh, of what's going on in terms of looking at the new world order. You're looking at this plan to build a global superstructure like many others, though, uh, looking at it from, a, from an alien conspiracy perspective. And so I think there's a number of people watching this show that do have interest in that area and do have an open enough mind to hear other thoughts and perspectives. So where would you like to begin in all of this? Well, of course, uh, in order to begin, you have to go through history. And what people may not realize is that this planet or the history of this planet is not what they have been told or taught in school. In fact, the entire solar system had a different configuration hundreds of thousands of years ago when Earth was actually the second planet in the orbit of the solar system. And Mars was the third one, and there was a large planet between Mars Did we lose our guest? Well, I believe my uh, cell phone's in here. Let's see. Um, go ahead and uh, I wonder why we lost him. We don't usually lose callers. But we'll go ahead and um, take care of this. This is why having some extra videos ready on hand are, are good to play during moments like this where we have these technical difficulties. Let's take a look at the Earth right now. Meditate on Africa. Okay, it seems that we've lost our guest here. I'm gonna dial one more time. Looks like they don't have caller ID. Maybe we'll have to go to open lines. Beautiful moment in time, isn't it? Stewart's called back. We have him for probably 30 more minutes, which is not a lot of time. If we can reschedule with Stewart, we can, but we have our guest back. Stewart, are you there? Stewart, I don't know why we lost you, uh, but we do have you back. Yes, I'm, I'm back for now at least. You're back for now at least. Well, I don't know uh, why that happened. Nonetheless, 30 mi minutes does not do us justice. Um, going back to your understanding of the reptilian aliens and their involvement on this planet, I heard you say on Coast to Coast that this goes back about 800,000 years? At least. You know, um, they were the first colonists, as I was mentioning before we were cut off. They're the first colonists on this planet, and human beings came many thousands of years later. And that's why the reptilians feel uh, a need to control the world because they feel it's their own planet. They feel it's, it's their own planet, um, that this is their uh, part of the galaxy to colonize? Correct, and they do have an agenda of assimilation of planets as they fan out across the galaxy. And part of the reptilian mindset is that because they are androgynous and because that they are unchanging over eons of time genetically, that that makes them superior to other species, and therefore it is their obligation to control and assimilate every other species that they come in contact with. You know, it's interesting because we're seeing this expansion of this global DNA database. Very, very interesting to see this expansion of this draconian type of a system, uh, type of uh, database that's being shared by governments all over the world. They say it's to prevent crime so they can uh, look up a suspect's DNA if they're accused of something, uh, et cetera, do a matchup. But I suspect that there's another reason behind this that deals with the bloodlines. Well, they, they always have a good cover story for why they do things. But yes, they do try to control all genetic information, and they even buy genetic information from countries. For example, Iceland, 
which has some of the purest genetics in the world and the easiest to test, therefore, has sold their genetics uh, to, uh, to global genetic laboratories for testing uh, for the purposes of controlling it. Okay. So how do you see the future playing out with these um, interdimensional um, aspects uh, going on in the backdrop. The backdrop of talks about a war with Iran that w would kick off World War III. The backdrop of talks of a dollar crash. How, are, how do you view the future and how some of these events uh, are going to come to pass in the reptilian involvement with all of this? Well, uh, that's a very big question. And uh, yes, the Middle East does come into play with that. Basically, there is an agenda of several uh, stages of control. Uh, one of which I, I would mention is the, um, the information about 2012 being uh, the end of the Mayan calendar and the end of civilization as we know it. And I would tell all of your viewers and listeners that that's really uh, a propaganda by the Illuminati in order to install fear uh, in people and allow them to uh, accept control to prevent these things from happening. What you're going to see in the next few months and the next year or so is the uh, formation of a staged alien invasion where they will have blue beam project holographic images projected into the atmosphere uh, they will you will see ufos in the sky you will think the earth is being attacked uh, then you will have an, a savior race come which will be the reptilians uh, to dispel and remove this attacking race which we will actually never see who or what they are after that happens they will have the staged second coming of Christ, who will then claim that the New World Order is his new holy empire. And so, of course, they'll just wrap it all up with a New World religion uh, and then assimilate the planet into a galactic empire of sorts where everybody has a role to play. There's no deviation in the, in the programming. Mm -hmm. um, and, and basically, it'll be a neat little package with everyone acting as if they were a Borg from Star Trek, each one under control of a computer and uh, performing their function without question. Project Bluebeam. So even Reagan talked about um, a new world order coming to form where the, the world's militaries come together to fight this extraterrestrial threat. And for those watching the show that have already looked at Project Bluebeam, um, it's believed to be some sort of a, a project that could be, well, actually already underway with the spirals we see in Norway and also in other places in the world like China, but holograms, holograms of specific spiritual deities like uh, Mary, uh, like uh, Jesus Christ. You know, it's interesting, there are so many people that, that are seeing these events, staged events, mind you, they're unfolding on the planet, and it's leading many to believe that uh, this signifies the end times or the return of Jesus Christ. And then we look at Project Blue Beam, where we actually do see today crosses in Russia above Moscow. We see triangles above Moscow, um, and we don't have images of that tonight. But wow, Stuart, in the last year, we've seen what I would call total confirmation that this is a coming reality. Absolutely, and you know, Blue Beam is, is an old technology. It was first tested in 1962 at Havana Harbor when uh, American submarines surfaced off the coast and projected images of the Virgin Mary over Havana Harbor in the uh, hopes of uh, converting the, uh, the uh, communists back to religious belief system and overthrowing the government. So that was back in 62. You can imagine the improvements that have been made since then where they have actually added sound to the holographic images. Uh, Japan uh, technology has actually enabled you to feel and touch the technology as if it was a real object or person in front of you. And it can even be picked up on radar, as we saw from uh, a couple of years ago at Sydney, Australia Airport, that uh, picked up this huge object coming in from space uh, that was picked up on radar. They thought it was a meteor. It, it supposedly crashed into the ground. There was a big explosion, a fireball. And when they went to, uh, to check it out, there was absolutely nothing there. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's very, very interesting. Um, uh, by the way, for those that are watching, there's a lot of stuff that Stuart has at his website. If you go to expansions.com, you can also look him up on Google Video and YouTube to watch a number of his other interviews. And so, Stuart, with, with all of these cell phone towers, like in Portland, Oregon, they keep expanding the amount of cell phone towers that we have in the city. Um, more and more um, wireless.